Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today I'm covering how to handle large data set with pandas. I have received few questions regarding handling data sets that are larger than available memory on a computer. How can we process such data sets via pandas? My first suggestion is to use distributed engines that are designed for big data. Some examples are Dask, Apache Flink, Kafka, and Spark. We are covering Spark in the recent series. These systems use a cluster of computers called Node to process large data sets. They can handle terabytes of data depending on the available nodes. Anyways, let's say we have some data in a relational database. It is small to medium sized data set and we want to process it with pandas. One suggestion would be prior to loading the data set into pandas, filter out the unnecessary data. In order to load data into a pandas data frame, we use the read SQL query function to read data into a data frame. If the data set is larger than the computer's memory, then we will encounter auto memory error. Here the problem is we are loading all the data into memory at once. For example, if you have millions of rows in the SQL query result, then we don't have enough memory to hold that data. To solve this issue, pandas does have a batching option for the read SQL query function, which can help us reduce memory usage. However, it's not perfect. It also loads all the data into memory at once. How do you process data sets that are larger than memory with pandas? Let's fire up our Jupyter Notebooks and find out. We are using Memory Profiler library, so make sure you have this library installed prior to importing it. As usual, we'll import the required libraries at the top. In addition, I have a function here that converts the bytes to human readable format. As a starting point, let's just look at the basic example. We load the data from a SQL database into a pandas data frame. And for this, we use the read SQL query function. This will turn our SQL query into a data frame. Once we run this cell, we notice that we load 1 million rows into this data frame. We see the total number of rows that we are processing. We see the total memory consumption and the peak memory. At the moment, we are processing all the data at once. Therefore, memory consumption is high. Let's say, for example, if our memory is eight gigabyte and we are trying to process uh, roughly six million rows, then this will raise an out of memory error as the amount of data available will exceed the memory. So if you look at this report, we can see that all the rows in the database are loaded into memory at once. To reduce the number of rows we are processing, we can use one of the basic techniques of memory reduction, batching. We can process this data set in batches, let's say 10,000 rows in a batch. And most often, we don't actually need all the rows in memory at once unless we are performing some analytics on it. But in this case, you're trying to process the data from one system to another. We load the data in chunks. And in this fashion, we process the data one chunk, meaning 10,000 rows at a time, which means we only need as much memory as a single chunk. So we introduce an additional parameter to the read SQL query function. We set the chunk size depending on our data set. And since we're processing 1 million rows, and let's say we want to process these in 10 batches, so we can set the chunk size to 100,000. Setting the chunk size will result in a data frame that is iteratable. Let's go ahead and run this. We can see that each batch requires about 180 to 190 megabyte of memory. This is a definite improvement. We have reduced the memory usage from roughly 600 MB to 200 MB. However, this is quite deceptive. In the back end, we are still loading all the data in memory at once. So what's happening in the back end is the SQL Alchemy is using client side cursor, which loads all the data in memory and then hands it over to Pandas API. And then Pandas produces batches of 100,000 rows at a time, but it is batching it from the local memory. If our data set is bigger than available memory, then we will still run into the auto memory error. 
To fix this issue, we can enable batching at the source. For this, we need to tell SQL Alchemy to use server-side cursor. We can call the execution option method on the connection itself. In the execution option, we set the stream result equal to true. Now, instead of loading all rows into memory, it will only load rows from database when they are requested by the pandas. This flag is currently understood by only a handful of sources, PsychoPG2, MySQL DB, and PY MySQL clients. If you are querying some other database, then you won't be able to use this option. However, check SQL Alchemy's uh, recent documentation and they may have added support for your system. Let's go ahead and run the updated code and to compare our results. I'll go ahead and let this finish. We can definitely see a memory usage improvement here. If we compare this report to the prior one, we have a definitive improvement in the overall memory consumption. So this is the real batching where we are only loading 100,000 rows from the source into the data frame, then we process it, and then we process the next batch. This is a good option to reduce memory usage. There's a pull request open on GitHub for Pandas Dev. And if you don't see support for your dialect or for your system, then be sure to head over there and open a pull request. I will leave the link for the existing PR in the description below. Okay, so with the help of batching, plus the server-side cursor, we can process larger dataset with Pandas. We can process batches of 10,000, of 100,000 rows, uh, and process one batch at a time uh, to conserve memory and process large data sets. This is all on Pandas batching for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.